I think starting with the DAO hack is important, so we understand some very basic concepts and maybe we can have a kind of a sensation or vision of what happened uh, at that point. So today we're going to do research into the DAO hack. My idea is maybe finding a GitHub with some, um, you know, some code reproducing the exploit. Maybe there will be foundry hard hat. I don't know. Let's take a good look. And the idea is to create a script to try to deploy and really understand it well. We're also going to go a little bit into the story of the DAO hack. So let's go let's start by opening here brave and what i want to do actually i want to close this and i want to open this and i have here the ui plus the smart contracts for the DAO hack um i'm just gonna really fast jump into the smart contracts here to see if i can uh, understand how complex the, the DAO contract was. Uh, um, so here, oh, I, I love this, I love this. Thank you so much for being so simple. So this is actually already a simplified version of the DAO hack. I wanted the original contract. I imagine the original contract must have loads of uh, complexity. So I'll try to go for the, uh, let's try to find the real contract for the the DAO hack and then we can we can try to simulate the attack maybe write everything on foundry set up the the situation for the attack understanding the state of the network in there and then we can go back to to revisiting the story and everything so the first thing i'll start is trying to find the real contract so the DAO. i'm gonna go for google because you know i haven't installed yet LibreWolf, like Scroll recommended me, I need to do that. So what I'm going to search here is the DAO contract hack address. And I really did a really dumb search. Just want to see this mod, the DAO, uh, the DAO hack, the DAO hack smart contract okay what was the DAO hack can I just like I try it to be less less sort of side let's see A simulation the DAO hack let's take a good look in here Security, read over remix. Why can't I find it? The original Dell Hacks Mark contract. Why that's so hard? The entrance a reproduction into Huffle. I'll go try to look for it. Yeah. Ev yeah, everybody's free. Just one thing about these sessions, everybody's free. To, this is not me, I like open mic. Okay, so if you guys know, take it, take it from me. Um, okay, I ain't gonna be losing a lot of time trying to find the original contract. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the story. Jake is already helping us on that, and we kind of have a simplified, a simplified attack uh, contract that we can use to understand what happened. Let's go a little bit over the story of what happened. I imagine a lot of you guys already know this, but let's just refresh our memories over what happened during the Dell hack. Um, instead of reading all this thing, I'm just gonna open ChatGPT. Maybe ChatGPT can show me that, you know. That's how better than Google this is. Um, Good idea. Let's try that. Please show me this smart contract that was hacked in the famous DAO hack on Ethereum. It's no longer available. Yeah, this is how, how better than Google uh, this thing is. Uh, okay. Shouldn't be saying that in the recording section. Um, so 
we can see really old solidity just by looking at it. We don't have the visibilities or some things are different. So let's wait for Okay, let's let's read the contract. So contract is called DAO, has a structure for a balance and a mapping for allowances, classic stuff. We also have another mapping for accounts, also classic stuff. Uh, we have a unsigned EWIND for the total supply, and we have a public function for the owner. And then we have a balance of function, we have a transfer function, and we have a transfer from function. Um, interesting. Um, so implementing a lot of these these functions. Uh, um, so transfer from we have an approve function, a create tokens functions, and a withdraw function. Now. Um, so here's the withdrawal function. We'll simply do a transfer. I mean, just by looking at this contract, I get a little bit confused by why we have these token functions here. Probably some sort of, you know, uh, interface to some, some token that was stored in the contract. But we can already see the problematic piece in the withdrawal function. As withdrawal functions never no, but this is interesting. You gotta be the you gotta be the sender. So let's take a look at this function here, the balance function. The only function that show me can you explain the attack? Let's take a look on how ChatGPT explained that's for us. So the DAO centralized autonomous organization built on Ethereum blockchain, it allow users to invest Ether in exchange for DAO tokens, which could be then used to vote on proposal for how the DAO funds should be spent. The DAO was built as a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain. The vulnerability in the DAO function was related to create tokens function. This function allowed the user to send Ether to the contract and receive DAO tokens in exchange. The attacker found a way to exploit a recursive call vulnerability in the create tokens function, which allowed them to repeatedly call the function before the balance of the contract was updated. Okay, now that we have that piece of information, let's take a look at this function again. So we see that the function is payable, so it's getting either. Um, and so what's ha what happen is what's happening here is the user is sending the ether to create tokens and then we do this division by a hundred fini and then we update the balances. What would happen if I call create ether function, create tokens for any anyone has any idea how to exploit this? What is my one question? Is, is anyone else seeing like the low quality stream? Yeah, let me see if I can. I mean, it sends it says 1080p 30fps in the top right corner for me, but uh, def it definitely doesn't look 1080p. I don't think I have to have Nitro to see a good stream, only if I want to stream. Myself. One thing is my screen is widescreen, so I don't know if that's... Let me see if I can change the view configuration here to something decent uh, on the screen. I'll stop sharing. It share. just be Discord, to be honest. Yeah, I mean... You guys are seeing... Everybody seeing the same thing? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not good quality though, but... Maybe I'll let, let me try, let me try. Uh, I mean, it's slightly readable, but. Oh, let me try yeah. to share again, but now I will try to update the quality of the transmission. So I will do this and I'll say screen here and I'll say like whatever, like this resolution. And I'll keep the, the so we should have a little bit of a better 
Oh, much better. Resolution now. Okay. Infinitely better. Awesome. Okay. So, so you, yeah, you got... You guys have any ideas on how? Because I don't see it. Because I was thinking on a he entrance. I know this this is a he entrance, but how the he entrance works when the tokens are leaving the account? Because I'm using the create functions. So are we sure that ChatGPT is showing us the actual correct contract code? I believe. Yeah, I, I don't think it is. You don't think so? I no. If if you go into the uh, Look, look in the voice chat, uh, chat. You can scroll down and see the actual contract. And I don't think it's similar to the one that you're getting from ChatGPT. Can you send me the link here? I'll, I'll, I'll... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's in the uh, chat, on voice chat. Awesome, thanks, man. Isn't this the one that was fixed with the fork? Wait, uh... Oh, no, Lambda already found it. I don't even know. One sec. No. Oh, we, I think it's the same contract, guys. But now. And now it's come back to low quality stream. Yeah, probably is my my connection is not the the best one. Token creation. Yeah, because this contract. Okay, but I think we can we can focus on this one. Um, so the attacker created a malicious contract that called create token function several times in a single transaction. The attacker then sent Ether to the DAO using the malicious contract. The create tokens functions would create a new DAO tokens based new DAO tokens based on the amount of Ether sent to the contract. The malicious contracts would then immediately call create tokens function again before the balance was updated okay so the create function the create tokens function has more things to it let's see because i think this is the because we have transactions coming up from three days i think this is the fixed DAO contract but let's just see the create tokens function it's not even here right? create tokens wait miss if you if you go onto the train link uh, blog they show you the uh, attackers contracts as well yeah, okay. So the DAO, the DAO hack chain. So it's going to go to the story and fallback functions. So this is kind of, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't think this is the DAO contract, but they kind of simplified, the guys explained what the problem was here, you know. Uh, no, no, if you look under the header, it says um, start with the DAO's code. Let me see. So I, I think it is, I think it is. There. You can see the commit history. So this is from, yeah, this is what we want to see. Um, uh, I want to see that before, before the fix. No, it's not that. It's here, browse files. And then where's the DAO that's all? True. At least. Anyway, let's not focus on that. Just, just try to see. Let's just try to work with. So, 
the function would then uh, call create tokens again before the, the DAO contract was updated. This causes the DAO contract to issue even more DAO tokens than the ether that was actually sent. The attacker was able to repeat the process uh, many times. The attacker was able to explore and removed 150 million e dollars from the chain. Okay, show me, show me the attack contract. Yeah, I mean, just, probably just a bytecode, but he's going to give us something here that... Uh, yeah, he's completely dreaming the the address, the, the attack and the address and everything. Because DAO address, function payable, attack DAO, does not show me the attack. Show me the whole code. Show me what the code would look like fast. Mm. This is so boring. Okay, guys, that was it. That was fun. Let's try to uh, now reproduce this thing. And I have some GitHub repositories here that will allow us to do the to do a simulation or to reproduce this thing. Mock DAO hack. I wanted to create a recursive service and exploit a similar to the one used to drain the DAO. I wrote an extremely simplified DAO contract, which is vulnerable to the hack. Blah 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 blah. I wanted one. We also had the tokens and they exploited the same function, the create tokens, if that was really the case. Uh, is that explained in the... Let me just see something, because I'm also thinking that... So, what is a he entrance? We know what is a he entrance, and let's see... Yeah, I don't want to understand the he entrance attack code. I really want to see some code from the DAO. Um, blah, blah, blah. First move is not there. Worth of ETH from the DAO. We probably can see that, that contract looking at ETC, ETC blockchain, right? Because ETC is pretty much that. But let's see the mock DAO hack here, and let's see the attacker, the dumb DAO.sol first to see what we have. So we do have the payment call, tokens bought, trans token transfers, interface and funds. Then we have here the mapping for for the balances, uh, the buy tokens function, and we have the transfer tokens function. Um, then we have the withdrawal. Yeah, that makes more sense when the withdrawal is not for only for the owner, right? And then we can see, we can clearly see the he entrance here. Let's try setting up that of Foundry and see who's a Foundry master in there. Do we have one? I have the video. I have the video here converted. So let's go for Foundry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go for VS Code. So let's go for VS Code. I think I have Foundry installed, although not really sure. We're gonna find out right now. Let's open VS Code and let's write in there open a terminal. And you know I'm kinda of doing a lot of heavy things. So I'm streaming, recording, and also converting videos here at the same time. So that's okay. Um first thing we're gonna head into the projects folder and I'm gonna create a directory for I do have here the Viper sessions. I'm going to create one for uh, exploits. Exploits. Okay, I'm going to get in there and I'm going to create the make the hack 
in their hands. I must hand. say, would this not be easier to just do in Remix? Yeah, I just wanna I, I just wanna be able to send these things to GitHub because oh, okay. as sure. I, as I'm recording these, you know, people maybe want to also see parts of these codes. But you, but but yeah, it would be way easier to do. The thing is, with with Foundry, we're able to put like 100 ether. Okay, you could do the same with with Remix. You can also use the VM to do that. But that's it's also good because we got to learn a little bit of Foundry. Do you ever used Foundry? Sure, no, I don't even know what it looks like. You, you're gonna love this. So, I don't I don't really remember, but I think we need to do like Forge init here. Okay, I think something is happening. Yeah, okay, we have Forge. If we have Forge, let me do this. Now we have all the folders from Foundry. To install Foundry is just one line of command, just copy from the website. And now we have the source folder. Let's go into the source folder. And we have the counter, which will be like the basic contract. One, one, I think one dumb thing I did here, I could do better is go back to directories. Maybe remove everything from this one. Uh, I think this, I think I should do, yes. It's already, very removed. Are you trying to delete everything from yeah. inside Jailhack? Yeah, already, already worked. Now we're gonna do, we're gonna just, I uh, just wanna do the Forge init one folder beyond, so we have, we have the same foundry for everything, otherwise we're gonna have like thousands of instances of foundry. So just gonna do Forge init. Ah, so it's gotta be empty, no problem. Now, now we can work in a more organized way. So I'm just gonna go on source and I'm gonna create a DAO, DAO hack. I'm gonna get inside. So what I have with Founder here is first my, my counter contract. To run the tests, I can do, I think, force tests or force test. And to see, Foundry is much, it's much faster than, than Hardhat. Of course, he's gonna do all his thing now. Ideally, we need to set up mapping, set up the, the integration with visual code, but let's just try to make it easy here. Um, so yeah, we're gonna create an attack. Sorry for, you know, it's gonna take a little bit of time because well, the thing's happening in my computer. Here's the test. Foundry also allows us to to like have a more precise view of the execution chain. We also have things like a debugger, you know, all these things I do not know how to use, but we're gonna learn how to use them together. And I know also they are really hard to use, because, really easy to use because you have all these, all these people using it. So what I'm gonna do next step is I'm gonna open the folder. So let's go for file manager, not an application, but here, let's go for open folder. Close this guy. I have a relief. Okay. Open folder. And let's open projects. Exploits. We want to open that. Okay. okay. And here we have all the structure for Foundry and the configuration file too. You know, it has a little bit of the mapping. So, where is the search folder? where's the compile files or where the compile contracts are going and where the libraries are being loaded from. I'm just gonna search really here. Go on. This is interesting, Foundry uses this tom TOML file. Yeah. It's, uh, it's still like JavaScript, TypeScript based? No, it's Rust. Uh, found uh, oh. Yeah, Foundry is fully oh, I Rust. I know that, now I'm way more interested in Foundry. Yeah, and super, it's way faster, you know. Um, uh, yeah, you're, you're gonna love this stuff. Dude. All right, now I'm hyped about boundaries. Yeah, you're gonna love this stuff. So let's go. Let's now see the counter contract, just so we can have a, a vision on that. Classical thing, we already know it. Um, well, I do need to install a little bit of a Solidity extension here just to make our life a little bit easier. This is a brand new, brand new thing here, so. 
What is the good one? You guys know? I don't know. This this who won Blanco? I'm honestly not sure between the hard hat, the uh, Nomic Foundation uh, one, or the top one. I think the top one has the most installs though. So. Yeah, but the top one I think is a very old one. You see, I think this one, the this one is the good one uh, because look at the the score five. Okay, while that's happening, we're gonna create our beautiful DAO contract hack. So we're gonna do a new file and I'm gonna call it the DAO, DAO.sol. So this is our, our DAO. And I'm gonna create also a new file and I'm gonna call attack DAO.sol. And just so for convention, I'm gonna use the candle case thing. Um, while everything here is happening, I'm just going to head out and copy the smart contract from our dear friend in here, the dump DAO smart contract, and we're going to go over it really fast. Um, so we may face a few problems because of Pragma versions. Um, yeah, we may face a few problems because there's not even a troll anymore. Solidity. Let me see if I can find simplified DAO hack contract found it compatible. If I can find that, that would be the bomb. Um, let's see, this one's the one that I'm open right now. Let me see this guy here. Yeah, this guy seems like he's not doing any old syntax, so it's good enough solidity for us. So let's copy this guy because this is not so old as this this other one. And instead of using seven, we're just gonna go for the latest version because why not, right? And there we go. Here we also gotta maybe choose the this thing. Um, first problem we're facing here is the expected semicolon. Probably, probably not really a problem. Or is it a problem? What is so the first? The attacker has to put some ETH into the contract. So is that with invest? Yes, and I'm just trying. Expected token, same column. What's happening here? Function public payable. Address two. Address two. Oh, boom, boom, boom. Well, I'm just gonna. If you're gonna start making my day hard, I'm just gonna put you out of the game. So for some reason that event was not working. God knows why. We also have a problem here. Uh, in my limited solidity experience, it's almost seemed to me like it's safer to just go with zero dot eight dot zero. Like yeah. When I ended up having like problems. I'm do gonna have to. I do gonna have to. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use the version that he's using. Well, I'm making my life harder, right? I'm stupid or something. Um, just gonna install that. So I need. I do I have SoC? You guys know SoC Select? SoC Select is a tool to install different compiler versions of Solidity. Really useful. So what I'm, what I'm doing here is installing the version 7. It's going to take a few, maybe a few seconds, start, and now we're going to use it. So I need to do use it. And now I can say so c.v and I should say 7. Oh, version. No, maybe true. Yes. Now that we have seven, we need to set up, because there's something with VS code, you need to set up the compiler that's running on that. Um, so here right now he's trying to see what is the compiler, he's not being able to understand that correctly, but there's no problem. Uh, I mean, you just need to run like soul C in the command line. Yeah, let's see. With the file, right? Where the file is, right? Big Dell hack. No, 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 you mean to compile the files? No, we're gonna, yeah, no, we're gonna compile, like, we're gonna compile. Like big, big editor. No, no, we're gonna compile with Foundry. So I'm just trying to, to see 
why we have this error here, but I will not even care about it. To compile a specific file version, we found you there's two ways to do it. You can come here and set a default, a default compiler version, or you can specifically tell what is the compiler version you wanna do. Let's just Google that really fast so we can, you know, because, well, maybe we need to change the compiler, how to set the compiler version during execution foundry that was the worst search ever done on Google. Um, foundry I think it's compiler probably. Let's see. Compiler automatic compiler. Uh, go back there. Set set compiler version. Set compiler version. Set so C version. Version foundry. Set compiler. I remember we had this small hack to do that, which was like just add this thing in the. I think this. I think we can do this. Let's try it. Let's try, let's try it. Where's my VS code? There we go. I still have the the foundry lesson open here. So to call using the specific compiler you can use an environment variable like that one we have here. Or we can do something else. So what I'm going to try to do is call with the compiler version. Let me see this. One second. Environment verbosity. Environment TX initial block blockchain ID. Preference configurations. Compiler. So C version. So can I just do so C version what the fuck? equals zero dot seven dot zero and then say for test probably the, the the probably the comment for well, now, now control E doesn't go to the end of the line. Why am I using this terrible bash? Probably counters will break because it's using the latest syntax, you know, so it's not compatible. But yeah, it works. I mean, that's what we wanted. Um, so he's saying we're using this, uh, the compiler 7, and you know, so just so you guys understand, we needed to set a, a, a environment variable for the compiler version. Uh, uh, so overwrites whatever was the default in there. Cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to probably remove these counters test here. So I'm just going to delete this, move to trash, and I'm going to go to for the tests. And I have one also test file here, which I'm just going to copy. Um, I wonder if testing requires a specific Solidity version, otherwise it would be easier for us to just upgrade this contract to whatever syntax is the latest one. Uh, shouldn't be that hard. I think this should actually work because I guess for Foundry we're gonna need at least to use foundry tests, we're gonna need at least that version of Solidity. I'm pretty sure they, they, ain't gonna, they ain't gonna work for with some old obscure Solidity. So I'm gonna go back to so select, install. Guys, feel free to participate with me, okay? Just say whatever you guys wanna say. Talk about your days. This is not a curse. This is us, only us like trying to figure out these things together, you know? Um, now I'm gonna do use this this version, and now I'm gonna do the testing also using 
and this shouldn't break counters anymore. I wonder if we can I can retrieve the file. No. I mean, honestly, I might just try to modify the solidity to make it as simple as possible, so it just works with version eight. Yeah, I think this this is already gonna work. Okay, so this we already have something that works. Now we just need to. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove. Not even remove that for now. I'm just gonna create a new folder here in the tests, and I'm gonna call it DAO hack. Very simple same structure as we had before and inside i'm going to create a test file that will be kind of executing the attack for us so it's gonna prepare the, the contract for the DAO, put ether into it prepare everything and then we're gonna have and then it's gonna deploy the attack contract and execute the attack uh, um, so we're gonna be able to understand all the setting up of the contract and all the the, the problematics he had in the first place so let's go. I'm gonna do and DAO DAO hack DAO.t dot saw. Okay, so this every time you see this dot t dot saw is a test in, in Foundry. Just I'm gonna just copy the code here for this thing. And I can see a little bit of a problem with my map. I don't know. Yeah, I don't need this really. Um, this should work. Probably some some stupid thing. It's probably working. Move to trash. And now comes a very interesting part. We need to set up to prepare the contract. So we need to prepare uh, the DAO the DAO contract to be as close as it was at that point to to the attack um, so maybe let's put in let's take a look at the at the contract and let's so we can see that we have a different field address they can invest so let's try to put in five different users and come to a sum of you know maybe a thousand or two thousand ethereum ether actually because ethereum and ether are different things and and let's try to, to make this work my question here is, will this will this compiler? Let's find out right now. I can do a thing force compile. Probably the test will fail because we're still using the old code. So I'm just gonna remove all these things from here. And I'm gonna say, instead of this complicated thing, I'm gonna say, hey, this is the DAO hack test. I hope it works and we have a problem at the, the, exactly at the file we we're talking about that's the file so let me try that again and see if we're still gonna have a problem compiling 22 files with so test and Andrew used solidity testing yeah, you're right. So you don't have to write JavaScript anymore, which is beautiful because it gets your fingers loose, you know, lost, lose weight with so many bits. One second, I'll be back. One second. Yeah, you see? Now, now it works compiled, so we know they will use the country. One second, guys, I'll be back. One second. Okay, I'm back and now let's keep on. Um, so the compilers are, the, the contracts are compiling. The only problem is happening here is because VS Code didn't understood how to work with Foundry yet. Probably good for us to solve this so we can have a code completion. So let's just go through how to set up VS Code to work with Foundry the right way because I feel that, let me see how many persons are with us right now. Nice, quite a few persons. Is it? Yeah, let's set up uh, VS Code to work with Foundry. I'm just going to the documentation and I'm gonna search Foundry book. V 
DS code. I know that there's a link for for that. I think this is it. So he's explaining us some things we need to do, create this, you know, if you already have, if you're already in Tom, founder.tom, copy them over and use remappings.dex instead. Um, so we can just do these things, you know, um, yeah, we can just do these things. Uh, so let's do them. Um, You want to place your mappings in your remappings in remappings.txt. If they are already in found.com, copy them over and use remaps instead. God knows why. Let's let's copy this this common. And are we need, are we doing when remappings are the paths? So which paths are going where and everything? Um, so let's run this. Awesome. Now we should have this remapping file remappings file and okay once this is done we need to add these configurations to the settings.json so I'm just gonna do control P settings.json or control A I think or control where are the VS code control P uh, I think control shift P yeah oh, yeah you gotta get the Greater than sign. Yeah. Settings. Chisel. Yeah. Can you hear me just fine? Yeah. Perfectly. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Because occasionally I'll I hear maybe it's because you're recording. I hear my voice back, but sometimes it's been I don't hear my voice back till like ten seconds later. And wow. I don't respond to me. Cannot edit in editor. Yeah, so of course we, of course, of course, nothing works as you, you plan, right? This is all development is all about having a high frustration, you know, resilience. Uh, so we need to open the settings. I want the JSON workspace settings. JSON maybe this one. I'm just gonna open the file. Also, I can just do that. I'm also being stupid. So let's just do sudo nano dot vs code and settings dot json, and then let's drop over to this, which is probably the same file I'm opening right now, or not? I wonder. And then I'm gonna add this thing. This thing here. Uh, so just. Interestingly, my you know most of my my control hotkeys are not working in this in this terminal for some reason. Okay, save it. Okay, now we should have the formatter. Yeah, I don't want to do this formatter thing. Or maybe I want to. gonna add this and see what happens when did you put that inside the formatter section no. okay and so see version yeah I'm gonna set that now I'm gonna probably have to restart this thing because you know VS code so yeah, save everything. Let's, don't don't save this. Control Z. I don't want to save this. I already saved. Now let's open it again. Okay. Now if we open that folder again, we should be able to have a, a less buggy environment so let's open this guy awesome all those beautiful new settings nice so 
wait a little bit for it to index everything. Yeah, for some reason we still see the problem on the the mappings here. You know, um, let me take a good look here. So forge deep std should be here I wonder if I can just use the go back forever syntax you know, like, like this exploit sleep uh, let's see what we have exploit sleep forge and then we have test.sol oh no okay the file is in a completely different place it's not the same as as what's specified in here can I copy the path of this thing because I need to set this value on the remappings uh, folder. So it's sleep ds test search test.saw. So sleep um, forge std ds test search. Yeah, this should, this should work. Um, Are you sure the path is correct? Probably something fucking with my remappings. I'm just gonna look at something here, then vulnerable defy. Because he's also using Foundry and he has a little bit of these things figured out. I'm just gonna. Um, yeah, just gonna give a good look at this. Uh, definitely modify Foundry. Perfect. Let me see the remappings they have in here. Okay, uh, most seems, seems to be almost the same. Mm, let me just try to copy this here and then replace this that I, I don't have this guy there. And something else I need to do is take a look at their tests because they have really good, uh, really good tests. This util things here is really nice. Util utilities. Um, create user, mine blocks, I'm just gonna copy this file because it's pretty good, uh, really good file. Man, this really should should work. Uh, just copy this, and okay, and here I'm gonna have a utils folder. I'm just gonna say utils, and inside, Awesome. If we need this, we're gonna have it now. Oh, wait a second. Is it fixed? Is it fixed? So apparently, because I have this folder, the folder is breaking it. Because look, from the search folder, I can see that that file, but not from the tests test folder. I wonder what happens if I move Ultios into tests. Yes. Not really. I want to move that into tests. We're still, still bugging. What if the problem is the pragma or maybe what if the problem is I'm not using anything here in this file
Well, how complicated things get, right? But we still can, we still can, can do this. Uh, we still can. We don't have, we don't really need to have these auto completion things. I'm just adding because you know, I thought that that would be better for us. But let's just go the hard way, and set up the contract based on what happens, on 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 the vulnerable defy. And that should be that should be enough for us. Let's go. So I'm looking at the vulnerable defy setting up, and the idea here is prepare the contract to have the same sort of the same setup as as the how the DAO contract had, you know. Um, so to do that, let's go back here and let's look at a few of these these contracts on tests here. Let's choose any one of the levels. Maybe let's get the backdoor level. And let's take a look at the test contract. So we need to go backdoor.t. And the interesting thing here is, is to, to try to see um, the setup function. You know, oh, we need to, to see the, the setup function so we understand. So we kind of understand what we want to do and, and so on. So this is the test. Uh, and let's, yeah, face it, that's the setup test, okay? So for the DAO contract, we need to see what do we need to set as any primitives, any kind of constructor parameters and so on. So let's take a good look at that. Let's just split this down. And here, uh, let me just, yeah, so now we have the contract. So we, we are looking at, you know, withdrawal investment, invest function. So there's not a lot going on. And yeah, let's now try to, to, to create the hack itself. First thing we need to do is import the contract. So we're gonna go for, let's see how that's done in here. So they just go back and, and import whatever they need to import. Let's just do the same. So we're gonna do a, we're gonna go back to directories to go out of the folder and go out of tests. And then this is what we're gonna do. Um, that's just. How's it ever gonna work if this thing doesn't work? Because this is just the IDE. It's not a real, real problem. It's just, it's just VS Code that doesn't oh, understand. It'll, it'll compile. Yeah. If I, if I say, if I try now, force compile, uh, it should work. You know, let's see. You see, I'm just getting these warnings, but no, right. but everything got compiled. So we're going to be able to, I'm just, we're just going to be able to set up a visual code properly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up the, I'm going to deploy and set up the whole contract. I need to create all the, all the variables. So I know, I know that I'm going to have a DAO that's going to be a public immutable DAO address. So this will be pretty much the the DAO. I'm just gonna call it DAO like that. Please, guys, uh, let me just do something here. Really. Ah. At Nico, how's it going, bro? Can you close your mic, please? Or just say hi. Good. <laughs> I think it's not your mic, but someone. We we're now reproducing the DAO hack. So. I know it's a very old one, but it's a classical, right? So just write in the test to make the setup. Awesome, let's do it. Uh, so first thing we do now, now I have a lot of a lot more pressure. Yeah. First thing we do is to create the, the the address for the contract. So we have a public immutable DAO from the type DAO. That's okay. We can also create one to say how much ether we want to add per user. So we can say you int from the six deposit deposit per user and we can say hundred ether. Um what else we need for the DAO hack? Um, a few addresses, uh, but I don't really think we need to set up those. Yeah, let's set up those here. So let's create a few few guys. So let's create let's create address internal jake oh fuck 
address eternal at people address eternal. Who's there? Misho's there too? Let me see. This is gonna be a bit buggy. Let me see his his nickname. Oh uh, Discord is buggy, imagine on Linux. Uh, buggy, buggy is also here. So buggy. I think this is it, right buggy? Also internal. Okay, so and then we're gonna have the attacker, of course it's gonna be a piece of chop uh, internal, I'm gonna call it hacker, hacker. Awesome. So we have three guys that trust the DAO and I'm gonna deposit their beautiful money into the hands of Vitalik. And now let's create a, a the setup function. The setup function will instantiate the contract. Say function setup public. I'm just copying what I'm seeing here on the that other foundry test. And you can see your beautiful friend uh, Copilot is already giving us the the good stuff. I do think I need to declare the, I was already declared as a test. So yeah, first thing declare the uh, deploy the DAO. The DAO is now deployed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deal first I'm gonna give you guys labels. So VM.label VM dot label Jake. So it's gonna be Jake, Jake. And then let's just, you know, and then we can say at Nicole, same thing. Buggy, same thing. Just so we can give name to the addresses. And then our good friend Hacker also is coming here. And after I give you guys name, I'm gonna deal a hundred ether to each one of you. I think I just need to call. I think I just need to call vm dot do. Why the DAO is involved in this? The DAO shouldn't be. Let me just take a look at other tests here. One second, guys. Let me take a look at climber. Climber dot t. And I want to see the deal. The deal. Okay, here. Okay, beautiful. Now I know how to do it. So we need to do Jake. You see, Jake, I don't have to write JavaScript to read the test. This isn't that much better than than doing JS, you know. And the hacker will have only one meter. Because there's also the output and throughput thing in the DAO attack, right? The hacker didn't have enough ether to take everything at once. So he was constrained to that. That's why people managed to do a counter attack. So let's see if we can do both parts. Yeah, you can only withdraw as much as you deposit. Yeah. Yeah, as you so deposit, you, you know. Amount, you just have to withdraw a million times. Yeah. So, okay, so we gave you guys some ether. Now, what we need to do, we have, you guys have Ether. Everyone has Ether. Everything looks beautiful. We need to start depositing in the, in the smart contract. So to deposit, is, go on. Is this uh, the VM deal and the label stuff, is that a foundry thing? Yeah, a yeah, thing? foundry, foundry. You see VM is virtual okay. machine. So it's all, it's, all, it's all foundry rusty magic. So here, I already have the the deposits that I'm doing. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Awesome. So now we have the setup. So now we have the DAO. Everybody made a deposit of 100 ether. And just so this doesn't break, I'm just gonna do 101 because I don't know how Foundry will deal with the, the cost of the gas, but I think it's gonna solve that for me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just create a function called attack public is it public that we create functions usually here uh, yeah I just do so that we're even gonna call the same name test exploit and I'm just gonna log here for now and foundry also allows you to do that I'm just gonna log here the balances so G balance 
before. So you should have one ether because you already deposit, you know. Uh, so let me just console log, log, check balance. And if we run the test with a VVV. Yeah. You're not. You don't. You're not. You're not is using it. I haven't. I haven't got it. Nah, bro. You're gonna love this thing. Yeah, I, I fucked up with the public. Let me see why. Uh, function setup. Function test exploit. Uh, oh, there's no uh, no uh, parentheses. Mm. Or, no, I'm fucking up something else. Yeah, I know why. I'm. I'm uh, I was on a different. No, I'm fucking Setup up. Setup has no parentheses. Yeah, but... Right? This is yeah. a solidity function, so a function needs to have parentheses after the name. Yeah, I'm fucking up something else here. Let me just take a look. Function test exploit, public, internal. And then the function above, too. Uh, once Setup. Yeah, this is... No, public here doesn't need parentheses. Do shouldn't I think needs here? Yeah, sorry man, I'm fucking up. Okay. Oh, awesome. Almost there. We had a small problem here because identifier not found or not unique, of course. The address. Right? This is what we need to do here. And then I need to say that the address is equal to down. Almost there. What's the problem now? Identifier not found or not unique. I'm using new DAO. I'm importing DAO from here. It's because I'm importing DAO. So I'll just say DAO conch. No, I need to say DAO. That's right. New DAO. What is the, the name of the function? Ah, it's DDO. Oh, fuck God. DDO. Dow. And I can say DAO here, yes, I should be. Right? These things are different tokens. And I can say here. Okay. Ah, let's look at the error now. Okay, stop fighting this thing. Dial dot C line eight here. I'm fucking up the immutable thing. You wanna bet? Mm, you're only setting uh you're only setting it once. Uh, I think he's Dow. Right. Yeah, but but I'm fucking up the this thing. You wanna see? Let me just go back to the other past. Uh, ready to start public immutable uh, so he's saying public immutable name let's just call contract instead of down let's go for contract I cannot be I cannot trust the your contract I mean am I using DAO any other way Tao. There's any constructor arguments? No, there's no, no. And test exploit. Ah, of course, maybe. And also, I forgot to do this this thing. Function um, this test exploit. Different error. Uh, expect identifier but got contract. We don't need this public here, right? Down. Is it immutable cousin? I don't think it should be cousin. I'm sick. I don't yeah, think well, I'm so I'm so fucking dumb man. Sorry, sorry for that. I'm fucking up. This is the DAO, not DAO. Fucking retired.
maybe I cannot call it contract. I don't get it anymore. I don't know what's happening. Oh, yeah, I'm fucking. I'm really. Because I should really deploy these. Okay, I think now we, we got past the error. So I'm just gonna call this address DAO. Yeah, okay, this. And now we, instead of depositing in the DAO, it's address DAO. And here, JIC balance, address DAO. Okay, now it should work. <sighs> no? Uh, what's the problem? Jig balance, whoops, sorry for that. Um, declaring did fire. Oh, I need to create this, right? So this will be like a uint 256 memory. I don't even need the memory thing here. Problem is bag, I probably wrote his name wrong. What's the problem? Did you mean buggy? Yes, I mean buggy. Mm, what is it? Oh, I love compilers. I've been looking for that for years. This is real developer life, okay? This is not some. This is not some. YouTube video like prepared cannot write here because of course it's immutable. Uh, yeah, uh. I know enough. I almost had that in the back of my head that you can only initialize an immutable variable inside a constructor. Yes, but yeah, but should be possible uh, because this is not a constructor. This is a setup. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's just remove the immutable. Boom! Yeah. Okay, we have something. So Jake balance before exploit is this weird number. Why can't I get a beautiful number? And why this is the balance if Jake deposited 100 ether? Let me think. Oh, it's because this is the balance of Jake inside the DAO. And what I want is the ether balance of Jake. So it's balance. How do I get the easy? I just forgot how to get the ether balance. Uh, it's, uh, I think address, right? Address Jake and balance off. Isn't it? Uh, oh, I'm fucking retarded. Get ether value from address. So wow, this is wow. No wonder. I think that's that is right. I think it's address not balance, just balance, not balance off. Yeah, this is it. Just balance. Okay. Probably I can just say Jake bot balance, but we're gonna find that out. So it should be one. This should be your balance. Yes, beautiful, we have it. And I'm going to remove all these Vs so we can get just the, the nice thing. Oh, you're only investing one for One second. <laughs> No, I'm, uh, I'm only leaving one ether in the user account after the deposit. The deposit, you understand? So, you, so I gave you 101 ether, but my variable for the deposit was 100 ether. Okay, so then uh, invest. Jake is investing 100 ether. Yes. Okay, so my my account should have one left. Yeah. So that's what we see. That's what we see. We need to to see that we need to pass one V. Maybe. 
Okay, so you see, Jake balance before exploit. I think I don't even need to call this function. Let me just see if that's the case really. One times 10 to the 18. So here you go, you see? So that's Jake's balance before. I wonder how to convert that foundry Google. Foundry convert to a cheater. No, there is probably just 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 divide it by one eighteen probably. Oh, divide it by ten to the power of eighteen. Yeah, so we can just divide this by one liter. Someone is in the in the sea with the or 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 up a bike. I think it's Baggy. Let me Baggy. Can you close your mic, please? Okay. So here's your balance, Jake. One. Okay. So the hacker. Now let's look at what is the balance of the DAO contract. So U V two fifty six. Not really hacker. I want the DAO balance, and I'm gonna just pass in the. DAO address, address drop DAO, I don't know how I call it variable. And we're gonna just copy this line. We're gonna say console.log. Let's wait for the pilot to do his thing. Um, why did I? So, so look, this is the, the balance of the DAO before the attack. So we have 300 ether and someone is about to lose it. Let me just see something here, bro. Yeah, I'm still converting this beautiful video here. Now, how, now let's think about the attack. We need to implement the attack without looking at it. So let's go back and look at the contract. So what we want to do, what we want to do is take advantage of the withdrawal function, you know? The fact that it's sending, uh, it's the message.sender.call, it's sending the value back before it updates the storage. Exactly. So the problem here, this could, could be avoided if they did this, you know, like this. Do some maybe they could do you know even something even more advanced use a he ancient card but I think this is the problem so our contract it's got a attacker contract uh, normally it could go to the receive function if you have that but the attacker contract intentionally doesn't have a receive function it just has the fallback for as a total catch all and then. He's gonna immediately uh, accept the funds and then call back into withdraw again. Yes. With the same amount of tokens that he has in the contract. It's important. It's gonna yeah. Go all the way until it's drained, and I guess that fails, and then it, but it goes back and continues on with his fallback. I think we can use both. I think we can use both fallback and and receive to to do this attack. But let's let's see let's see let's we can test both. Oh, I see. So I'm just gonna do here a pragma solidity 0.8.13, right? And I'm gonna call it contract. I'm gonna say, hey, this is the DAO attacker. DAO attacker, beautiful. Let's just do this. And the only thing we're gonna have here. Ah, you know, by the way, MVSEC, um, Jake? So Ethnical, he's here with us. He's the creator of MEV SAC. Yeah, I figured that. Spoke with him just a teeny bit. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna create a variable for the DAO contract. So first thing I'm gonna have to import it. So I'm gonna import DAO and I'm gonna say hey the DAO the DAO immutable address DAO. Set this in a constructor. Uh, public. The 
just going to see public, public. The DAO address DAO, it can, it can even be like that, it can even be internal, it doesn't matter for me. It can be private, whatever, like if it's private, whatever. And then I'm going to say constructor address DAO. So we first thing we do is we pass in the address. That is nice, man. And the second, no, stop, stop, don't do the attack for me function. Attack, don't do the attack for me, I need to think about it. So, the attack is. The attack is you call the withdraw function once. I'm going to deposit half, half my ether, right? Or, yeah, half or maybe 90% of my ether. And I'll try to withdraw. And then I'll try to iterate of withdrawal. So there is. So I'm gonna do a receive function. Function receive. Receive iter. Let's just receive. Everybody receive iter. Fucking crazy. Public payable. And this function will do withdrawal, but cannot be one iter, right? Needs to be the. Well, it can be any amount up to how much you have. In the yeah. Day. So I'm, I'm going to leave, I'm going to do with 0 0.9, but it would be very nice for us if we were able to actually calculate the attack size. And this is the most important part. You, know, you cannot be playing with random numbers like that. But so, so the way the attack starts is by me. So I'll just say, hey, one thing that is important, no, one thing that is important to understand here is that I am the attacker, this, this contract holds no ether. So I need to, whenever I'm calling this attack, I need to send whatever ether I'm gonna use because what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna invest. So I'm gonna do address DAO dot invest. Right. And I'm gonna pass in the value. So that first the brackets for the value, and I'm gonna say, hey, if I'm receiving one liter, I'm gonna invest, like if I have one liter, I'm gonna send one liter, and maybe let's do it 0 0.95 liter, 0 0.95 liter. And so just the more you do, uh, the, the higher of a number you have, just the faster the hack will work. Yes. Um, and then I will invest this value for address. I don't even know, this, this all happened, this entire attack happens within one block, right? Until the gas limit is reached, you know? Until you, ha until you, you have the gas limit, you're gonna be executing that. Um, but if you really know how to calculate the attack, like the numbers, you can, you can, be, you can even get some money from a friend or do something like that. So, so, so just so we go back a little bit in the invest function, takes the address. So that's what we're doing here. We're passing the address of this contract. Um, so what's gonna happen is we're gonna deploy, as soon as we call the attack, we're gonna send 1.05 ether. And because I'm using Foundry, I'm gonna do something fun here. I'm gonna do something fun. I'm gonna withdraw. I'm gonna, pull, I'm gonna print every time I got into this stage of the contract. I think I can do this using this thing. Uh, let me just see something really fast. Google.com and console.log. Console.log. Um, foundry. So, console.log. Okay, we have here. And to do a console log, what we need to do, do we need to add anything? Can I just do a console log without adding any standard libraries or something? That would be beautiful. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a counter variable. So I'm just gonna say, Ewing 256 counter equals zero. Boom. And every time we pass in through, what's the problem here? Public counter. I cannot, I should be able to, can I just, should be able to, address probably counter, yeah, I'm just, it's gonna work, there's no problem. 
counter equals zero. And every time, every time we pass in the withdrawal function, I will update counter. And I will print the interaction number. So about log. This is just for visualizing. Yeah, yeah just exactly. Okay, you wanna wanna try, bro? You ready? You ready for this? Let's fucking do it. Uh, okay, do you want to see the attack file? Best point nine five, so we can take the point nine five out each time, we're doing point nine four. Like, actually, we can do the same. Alright, so, oh wait. So the first time we invest, but then don't we, na we manually have to call withdraw the first time ourselves? Oh yeah. So receive gets called, and then it'll start looping. Very good, I was just testing you, very good. Awesome. That's actually <laughs> that's actually what we need to do. So we invest, then we do withdrawal, and then this should be triggered forever. Uh, yeah, let's try it. Let's try it. So imagine we are the hackers and we have Foundry, and now we're gonna start this beautiful thing by deploying the DAO attack contract. So we do type. I'm just gonna do a better name here because you know, I'm just gonna call it. Uh, and DAO attack, yeah, DAO, DAO attack. Okay, this is a beautiful, better, better name. I'm just going to say DAO attack, DAO attack, and I'm going to import that to import attack DAO. Okay. Um, now, so now we deploy the contract for the attack, and now we're going to go for the beautiful line. Which is DAO attacker dot attack send the value one liter and this is it man you ready ready That's all right so it starts with one ether and then it's gonna send 0.95 then it should be way higher. Then it should be like 300 and... Actually, I'm going to send the same number. At the end or something? I mean, I'm, I am i don't know how the gas limit will work to break the, the interactions, but it should work in a pretty fast because this is for one miners, not the whole network that is doing that. Let's try it. <sighs> Whoa. I, I hate when this happens. So he didn't find the file. Why the heck? Attack the DAO. Didn't found. You sure we're in the same folder? Can you show me where you are? Um, this, I hate this. Names are written. Something's uppercase, something's not. So search that hack. I maybe I need you to do this. Probably yes. Probably is what I need you to do. Aha! I knew it. Now I just need to pass in the uh, the thing to to console foundry. I need to pass in. I think these. What is it? This thing here. So I can use the console.log on the attack. Almost there. Of course, I made a mistake here because this address is payable. And to do that, to make it payable, I need to convert it to Payable. I think. I think this works. No, this doesn't work. Uh, address. Uh, payable. Can I do this here? No. What is the actual problem? 
yeah, sorry man, I'm fucking stupid. This is address payable. I thought this was not valid anymore. Okay. Implicit conversion from just think a little bit on line 42 on the test okay so line 42 here is payable payable or I can just say that this is payable here too Okay, seems like something happened, but I never saw all the all the V's. I'm just gonna call a big execution step here. Ah, okay. So the withdrawal actually, like you said, called a fallback function, not a not a, a receive so let's convert this from receive to fallback and let's try to run the exploit again wait really the the dow contract when it when it tried to send funds to you it called fallback instead of, shouldn't it call receive first look Oh, what happened here? Let me show you. So this is the trace, right? We run the test exploit. And then he called the DAO attack with this thing. And then he called, you see here, we troll and DAO attack fall back. And then he reverted. Let me see what is the... Why he reverted? The DAO withdrawal, DAO attack fallback. What I'm doing wrong. I also have a fallback function here. Fallback, ah, it's there now. Maybe that's the problem. That's the problem, maybe. Let's try again. This fallback that uh, does it not have the function keyword on it? I also think that, yeah, that good one. I don't know. Let's take a look now. Ooh, Jake. I think, I think we steal the DAO, man. Hey, bro. This is not good. We even have an overflow. We, we, we even have an overflow in the end. So I'm just going to remove all the, the Vs. That's true. Let's see what happens. Then we had 34, 100, 316 iterations. So if I go now, and if I log Jake's ba the, the hacker balance off before, so hacker balance before exploit. Let's just copy this line, paste it here and say hacker balance. And IRS hacker. And here's hacker balance. And then we're gonna do that again after the exploit happens. So that's the balance and after. Woo! We did it, bro. We hacked it fucking down. Oh, oh, maybe not. Maybe not. The previous declaration is here. If you get rid of the UN two fifty six, I think it'll let you reassign. Where is the hacker balance variable? I'm not you I'm not seeing on thirty nine. Line thirty nine. Oh um, the first hacker balance. Ah yeah. 
yeah yeah i'm trying to use it again after of course even the value would be different no of course let me just do this and do this okay it didn't work yet because let's think ah why jake didn't work how's the counter going down why why it didn't work tell me because this contract is not prepared to receive ether so we need to do a receive and we need to do a withdrawal withdraw if uh, function function withdraw if public if Wait, so two so owner the only thing that allows a contract to receive ETH fallback I thought fallback can also work for that. Yeah, fallback works for the when what happens with fallback is fallback will be called whenever whenever the function name is not found. So it's not only related to ether but any kind of context, you know? And receive you so the idea is for a contract to receive ether, it's gotta be explicit. You know, you need to go there and say, "Hey, I want ether in this. I want ether in this contract." Otherwise, otherwise, it's gonna happen. I'm just gonna create a variable for the owner here. Address owner, and I, and I could say here, owner, message sender. I'm just gonna say, "Hey, owner." So now let's try again and let's add a step for our attack, which is after this beautiful thing happened, we're gonna withdraw the ether to the owner. What's the problem now? Let's take a look. So these things are not easy, huh? So it reverted. Let's take a look at the execution context. Probably something wrong with this function, which I'll refer to the owner. Let me just see something. Maybe I need to make this external. And what is the problem with the identifier here? Address public owner. I wonder if if I don't call the address of the contract will have the ether because then I can track that as a different problem. Let me see how much uh, contract balance and then will be the contract which is called what is the name Dow attacker so I need to put this here after the contract was created. So dot attacker dot balance hacker balance and contract balance contract balance so we see how much balance the contract has DAO balance after before exploit, hacker balance before exploit. I do have two. Oh. I'm fucking up. We're fucking up something, man. It's mixed up. We're fucking up something, believe me. I'm wondering if this counter thing is breaking, you know? And then it's because of that. Let me just. Uh, but it was working, right? We had the counter in there. Do I need to send in the value that I need to withdraw? I'm fucking tripping. Yes, I need to. Look. Withdraw. The attack receive. Withdraw. Look. Invest. Withdraw. 
Okay, investment. Then they withdraw. withdraw. The then they'll attack, receive. It's calling receive. Then receive does nothing. Yeah, then maybe it's going to receive, not to... What if we do this? So instead of a fallback function... Well, it got called at least a couple times there. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. But I don't know if the fallback function carries the ether. We having these underflows. Why? Because we've got to a point in the contract where the value is zero, and he's still trying to to withdraw. So maybe I need to control what is the balance in the contract, and if it's less than one, what do you think? Like I like I could do something like. You reach to 56, balance is, is equal, address dial balance, and I can say if, if balance is bigger than one, so we're going to remove almost everything. So the idea is every time I get the balance, and once the balance is one, I will not overflow because I know there's nothing anymore, just stop. Oh, one second. I fucked up something. One meter. Is the DAO, the DAO hack, you know? So okay, we have a different error now. Mm, arithmetic underflow. Let's see if we can get the line. I hope I don't get the super huge. More than yeah, probably that's the key. We are, we are taking or or doing something weird with deposit. How do I debug with Foundry again? There's a debugger here, right? So let's take a look. Oh, one second. Oh man, oh man, really? You want to uh, make your window bigger here, you're not even using this console logging. Yeah, true. So investor DAO attack amount, withdraw, receive, withdraw, receive, withdraw, receive, withdraw, receive, withdraw, receive, withdraw, receive. You see, it's working, but we may, we need to control the gas left and the gas limit. I think because I think we are using all the gas in the block. Does that make any sense? Look at how many transactions are going on here. What if... Uh... Let's try again. Okay, well, if, the, if you want an easier way to test this problem would be... So, what, I think there, there's only 300 ETH in the contract. Just... Uh, Give the attacker 100 ETH to start, so when they invest, they invest 100. So that means it should only need to withdraw like three times instead of 300 with like yeah. 5 ETH. Yeah, we're going over unneeded complexity. So I'm gonna do then, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a little bit less. I'm gonna do 50 ETH to the attacker. Oh, it'll be 100 too. 101 and then the attacker deposits uh, 100 liter. We need to figure out this value thing, you know. So he's gonna have one deposit one. The whole attack happens. 
while the balance is still of one in the contract. So we should be able to have if if the yeah let's see what what happens because my my problem is if balance is zero well, let's see what happens yeah almost works so we were able to ah no fuck that actually never worked I never deposit as the hacker. Or did I? I did, right? Because in the attack file, I said, hey, one fucking hundred liter here. So we call it draw once, and then the receipt function does its magic. Yeah, so the attack happens, we trial receive, then receive, and then we trial. So it works for a couple. Then I have the. Everything is red. What's at the very bottom? There's like an overflow, underflow. Yeah, yeah. We trial amount. I think I'm trying to take more than the contract has. I'm trying to like withdraw too much at some point. Like yeah. Yeah, I think that's the problem. But I'm looking at the balance here, unless this balance is not being updated, you know. Um, what if I say, hey, do this three times? Or something, or maybe... This should work, man. I come here, I get the balance, let me console this thing. What is the balance of the contract each time? Hmm. What's the problem? What? Hmm? What? So it's the drawing a hundred at a time and it gets down. Maybe they'll like test each time what the contract balance is and then don't take any more out. Yeah, so I'm gonna say here if the and balance zero. equals eater. Like you need to call balance of uh, the DAO the DAO contract. No, that's what I'm doing here, look. I got the balance. Or you call withdraw again. This is what this, that's what what I'm doing. You seen the screen? Get the balance. Print the balance. If the balance is ether is zero, do nothing. So let me do if the balance is not zero, we draw. If it's zero, do nothing. Let's see this.
Yeah, sorry, man. Some I, I say things and then I think you're hearing them like 14 seconds later. Ah. So it sound really strange. Uh, no, okay, 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 this is okay. Let me think. We just remove this. I'm gonna have the same problem. Balance 300. Contract balance after exploit. Hacker balance after exploit. Why the hacker has 100 tokens? This is wrong. I never, never withdrawn the tokens for the contract. And attack with a hundred eater so I so when this happens we come in here yeah man in this chain link article it specifically says the send the transaction does not finish executing until the hacker's fallback function finishes executing But, uh, but okay, so tell me to do this, the fallback function, I'm gonna do it, so that's the, so I'm gonna do this. something really weird you know I'm sending the money to the contract to the attack con which contract I'm even looking at to totally confused now DAO attacker contract balance so why I didn't even oh it's because I did already oh, I, because I did one yeah, Okay, so let me do that. Interesting. I feel like that's why there's a arithmetic error. Okay, let's and try. Have any uh, receive function, just a payable fallback. I see. Okay. That's what, okay, makes sense. remove the receive function
Okay, well actually this if statement, I don't know if it helped us at all because there's always going to be greater than or equal to one e. We're withdrawing like what, 50 at a time or 100 at a time? Yes, do, do you think we have to control it ourselves? So we have to like, say, okay, we know this is the size of the contract. Uh, what if you made it where it's only, only so you're withdrawing 100 at a time, right? Yeah. So what if you do while well, it's... Like, I think maybe the idea of the contract, there's always some ether left over in the contract you're getting. So, what if you, since we're withdrawing 100 at a time, what if you made it uh, where it's greater than or equal to 100 ether? So you get the first 200 out, but then you still leave 100 in this, so you're never trying to, like, withdraw. I don't know. This is where I, I don't know, have the, the knowledge if it has a problem where it's trying to send the last bit of ether out of the contract. But with that, I'm only able to get one. So I had three deposits before. I should be able to get these three deposits, or at least two. And I have a hundred. So for some reason, this is also wrong. I shouldn't have. I should have zero because I gave all my hundred ether to the. How do I? How do I have a hundred ether? Unless this is not a hundred, this is fucking up. Could be just ways divided. No, 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 it's not working yet. It's because... It's taking out the first 200. No, this is wrong. Why the, the, the attackers still have the, all this money? Doesn't make any sense. If I call the attack function, I'm sending 100 ether to the attack function. I had 101 ether. Automatically, the, the function gets the ether sent to the to the address tau. Oh, but then I just withdraw right after I withdraw 100. That's why I still have 100. So I'm able to take 100 and I'm able to draw 100 into the contract. So the way we have it now, we have it working one time. If we look twice, twice right? let's see. Let's, let's the, the, the da so the DAO balance before the exploit is 300, right? Yeah, is this, maybe, is this a confusion with your print statements here? Is DAO balance and contract balance, is it, those are the same things? So contract balance is the attacker so let me just do this better attacker balance and hacker balance after here we go and I'm gonna do a DAO contract uh, up DAO balance after DAO balance after and after balance after down balance after so the down balance after what I'm doing wrong still the same still 300 which is wrong right because how can it be the same if I removed a hundred liter from the contract I mean if the if the contract has a hundred uh, that could be the problem this could be confusing me this this attacker so attacker had a hundred. 
Hawker had a hundred. Oh, bro. I have no Hacker idea what's. Hacker is the same. No, Hacker is my. Hacker is my account. The DAO balance is the address. Hacker is my account. And DAO. And attacker is the attack contract balance. So let me just remove Jake balance. This is not important. Let me try to remove this from here. And let me put better names here. I'll say DAO balance is okay. Attacker balance will be the hacker. I'm just gonna say hacker balance. And then I'm gonna have the attacker contract. And we only really care about two numbers, the, the hacker contract before the balance, I guess. Uh, yeah, we yeah we're not even yeah we're not even like looking at the hacker balance now. So I'm just gonna just need the I just want the contract to yeah. So I have the attacker balance after, and I have the DAO balance after. Um, so I'm gonna do the magic here. Ah, oh, fuck. Let's try again. So this is weird. No, okay, okay. So the contract is supposed to have a hundred because it's a hundred from the hacker that was withdrawn into the contract. And this is not important too. This hacker balance here is not important too. Let's remove this. Now we need to work the idea of why we have any. any how many persons are there? Any luck? Oh, just us. Just the strong ones. Um. But I'm recording. Yeah, we are almost, almost, yeah, almost there, bro. I'm thinking that if if I'm calling the same file back, this balance has never actually been updated. You understand? So atomically, this is not being updated. So I'm, I'm always getting the withdrawal condition, you know. So maybe what I should do is is do a counter because I know, I kind of know how much I have in the contract. So if I was a dumb hacker, I would say, hey, address, or better yet, you int public attack times. And we could start saying attack times equal zero, so it would be zero, it would be one, two, three. So we can say attack times equals now every time we get in here attack times will be increased and we plan to do it while we speak smaller or equal. so it's gonna get here one second time two so while is this smaller no, until it is, I think I can do this, right? Because it's gotta be smaller or equals three. So three, okay, so smaller or equals three. And we do this, otherwise, what can we do here? Like return or something, return? Do we even need to do these things? I don't think so.
we're not getting a we're not getting a a while attack times is smaller we're not getting a withdraw anymore so I'm getting withdraw and receive so this is not really working that console thing, the console log, it's just not printing out. It's printing out as like bytes or something. What is it? Yeah, for some fucking reason. Maybe I'll remove this return. This is probably fucking up. Invest with trial receive. Like the callback is not working. Or am I fucking up this attack times thing? Oh, we tied. I really had a counter here. I don't know why I'm doing this thing. Now. Just use this fucking counter. So while the counter is smaller than four, we should call this attack. This is a really dumb way to attack it. We need to be able to understand atomically what's happening. What are we gonna do? We're gonna do it. This is just the first CTF section. So let's see it again. We do the the whole mesh of you know setting up the contract, everyone investing, then we call the attack, something is investing, then we do a which role and receive. And curiously, it's called in the receive function, not the fallback function. So I'm gonna copy this code, I'm gonna yeah. paste it in the receive function. Yeah, it's almost there. Now we just need to do a smaller than three. I think I think this is it. Let's see. No, we still have an arithmetic, but and the Dow balance is now higher. Dow balance. Uh, so four hundred. Oh. Is that it? So it has three hundred from the initial, like you know, the regular people like me. And Investing in it, but then yeah. it has the four extra hundred for you as the hacker investing 100 the first time. Yes, pretty much that. What the fuck is happening here? Did that ever compile? It's going too much. So, true. So zero, one, two, yeah, that's three times. We're gonna do this, bro, you know? So, first we trial happens, we have a receive. This receive. doing something wrong, ain't I? If counter is smaller hmm. I'm really gonna have to ask chat GPT Let's go, let's do it No, I don't wanna do that because you know 
what I'm doing wrong, what I'm doing wrong. Counter every time calls the receive. Or maybe the fallback function should be called to increment counter. I'm gonna just copy this and we'll fall back again. I don't know what you do anymore. What is this console log thing? Why is this not even showing? What if I do the operation first? I start from one. So we start from one. We do the thing first. And chill. This while this is smaller or equal three. <coughs> And then let me copy. I don't know if this fallback function or if this receive function is working. I don't know, that's weird. I mean, like, Solidity doesn't have console log. It's like some weird foundry thing. Oh, yeah, this is foundry. This is foundry. Foundry logs. So now I'm gonna do this. We're gonna do this and I'm gonna upload this three hours video on the DAO hack for whoever wants to see this crazy. Event historical event being reproduced by Foundry with all the setting up. Why am I not debugging this? I should be debugging, debugging this. Like the receive function calls a withdraw. So imagine I'm withdrawing in a hundred. So the so look. Ah that's the problem. I think I found the problem. So let's look at the So we're gonna do the attack, right? Imagine this. I'm withdrawing uh, I'm putting a hundred and withdrawing a hundred, right? So the contract so the contract is now back to three hundred. Three hundred three hundred, which is you know all the deposits that were done before by these other users, right? So now, the thing is, when I call withdraw here, I'm already calling that one more time here. So this counter should start already by two. Why? Because I'm already did two. So whenever I did this withdraw, I already did already took my hundred. And I already took a hundred for someone else. So now I need to process these one more time. Because when I call withdraw again, I'm gonna call this again. So every time I call withdraw is work is, is like two times. You understand? So if I think that if we do this counter, like we well, wanna need to run that one more time. Uh. Second. Let me remove this control from here. So think on this, right? I'm calling the first time. First time I call the withdrawal. Automat so I took 100 and automatically 100 will come. Automatically in the receive function. That will call withdrawal again. So one. One, two, three, four. Let's let's try to understand which of the first which route works. Calls receive calls withdraw so here 
took a hundred, taking one more, so taking one hundred more. And if we look here, I wish I could print like the balance of the contract, you know, because then I could see at least what's happening, but Foundry doesn't want to help me with that. Let me try. So every time you call withdrawal, you're going to pre paste the, the balance. And why are you using that strange string to do that? They have taken this to to solely to the to remix, you know. I'm gonna stop. I should have listened to you the first time. I'm gonna do that right now. What do you think? Uh, doing what? I was trying to put this on remix, but I'll I'll try here a little bit more. So now I'm just getting the balance, so I can. Um, Print it. So console.log. Mm. That's the problem. The balance was never updated, man. The balance was never updated. I need to. What if we did? Instead of doing this, that we are doing right now, we did this, like we did this three times. So we know there's 300 liter there, right? And we can say, we can say, uh, ball attack it equals false. Ball attacker attacker equals true if do I need to have a return? This is what I don't know. If I need to have a return or if if doesn't return anything in the solidity file if attack equals false do this but for every time that's the problem for every time you're gonna come back here and attack will, won't be false yet you know so the first thing I need to do is this uh, no like I do this What if I do this and just like return? Because the problem is every time I call this function one time, it's going to be calling this forever. How do I stop this thing? You know? And their well, flow. The chain length, the, the chain and their flow. Code. You seem to have worked a little bit better now. Hey man, I gotta go uh, make some lunch. Nah, no problem, bro. No problem. Talk. No problem. Talk to you later, okay? If you're still here after, I'll hop back. Awesome, awesome. No problem. See ya. Bye bye. So, uh, let's do a little bit more research into the DAO hack as Chainik explained. DAO hack automatic over overflow. DAO hack. So we're gonna check how Chainlink did the attack file because they have a control there that we need. 
So this is the hacker contract, this is the tag, this is the deposit, this is the withdrawal, and the, the address, the fallback, make sure, get balance. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So it's even using a, a fallback for that. It's not even using a receive. I'm gonna try with the receive just to see if that actually works. Okay, so the idea here is ah, if the balance still has ether more than one heap, more than a hundred ether. If this, if the balance is equal or at least a hundred ether, do this. And if it's not, then do nothing. Okay, seems like deal. Okay. Okay, now we're trying to to pass in the code for the yeah we're getting this arithmetic on the flow i'm suspecting that the investing in the setup of the contract was somehow compromised i'm gonna stop this session for now but i'm gonna go back to it after thank you guys for coming and for showing up and I guess this is a lot of learning. Thank you.